Hello everyone, Indro here and today in this video I will show you how you can quickly create a Turing pattern also known as the Reaction Diffusion Pattern in Photoshop. First we will be creating this basic pattern and then stick to the end of the video to learn how we can quickly transform it into unique variations like this. Turing pattern can be used in different products like bags, book covers, mobile cases and whatnot. Let's open Photoshop and create a new canvas of size 1024 by 1024 pixels. There is actually a reason for creating the size to 1024 by 1024 and I'll explain to you in a short while why I did that. At first, make sure your foreground and background colors are set to black and white. You can click this small icon to quickly set your foreground and background colors to black and white. Then apply our first filter and that is clouds. Go to filter, render and clouds to generate the clouds. And then duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl J or Command J on the keyboard. Let's rename it as backup. Now the reason for creating the canvas size as 1024 by 1024 is that the default clouds pattern in Photoshop repeats itself along the edges at that specific size. So since we are creating a seamless styleable pattern, creating the initial canvas at 1024 by 1024 will definitely make things easier for us. Now we'll be going over some additional steps to make our final Turing pattern repeatable or styleable. Now go to image canvas size and make sure percent is selected and type in 200 by 200 to increase the canvas size. I'm clicking Ctrl or Command minus on the keyboard to zoom out. Now we need to create four copies of this backup. To quickly create the copies, select Ctrl or Command plus J on keyboard and press it four times to create four copies of your backup. Now make sure your snap is on, go to view, snap and make sure it's turned on. Now select your move tool, press V on the keyboard to bring up your move tool and move the duplicates of the backup copy so that it snaps along the center, like just like this. Do the same for the other three copies so that you are creating a large four times cloud patterns of the initial cloud pattern that we created. With that done, select the first copy of the backup and hold shift on the keyboard and click on the fourth copy to highlight all the layers. Now press Ctrl or Command E on the keyboard to merge all these layers into one. Now press the Ctrl or Command key on the keyboard and click on the thumbnail to select the pixels of this layer only. Then bring up your crop tool by pressing C on the keyboard and press enter or return on the keyboard to crop the canvas to that layer. Now let's hide all our unnecessary layers. So make sure you are selecting the main layer. Let's rename it as main. And let's convert it into a smart object so that everything that will apply on top of it gets applied in a non-destructive way. Select the main layer and right click and convert to smart object. Now we'll apply the main effects, the main filters for the Turing effect. And first we'll be going with the high pass filter. Go to filter, other, high pass and add a value of 5 pixels. Then add threshold, go to image, adjustment, threshold and add a default value of 120 levels. And then add a Gaussian blur, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and add a Gaussian blur of 5 pixels. We need to repeat these steps multiple times to get our desired Turing effect. To make things easier for us, we'll be recording all these three steps into an action and then we can easily run that action multiple times to replicate all these steps. Bring up your Actions panel by going to Window, Actions and click this new action set and let's rename it as Turing Pattern. Click this new action icon and let's name it as create. Hit the record button and you can see that action has started recording. Now everything that will perform in Photoshop will be recorded into this action. Let's apply all those three important steps one by one. Go to filter, other, high pass. Let's apply high pass with a value of 5 pixels. 
go to image adjustments threshold apply a threshold of 128 levels then go to filter blur Gaussian blur and apply a Gaussian blur of 5 pixels now we can safely stop the recording and all the important steps have been recorded over here let's collapse the action select the action and hit play to apply those steps multiple times you need to apply these steps to about 20 to 25 times and you'll understand the effect has been successfully applied when after applying the effects you will see no significant change in this pattern so as you can see if i run the action again the pattern does not change much so we can assume that the Turing pattern has been applied correctly so now let's add a final layer of sharpening to tidy things up go to filter sharpen and unsharp mask add an unsharp mask amount of 200 percent enter a radius of 200 pixels and a threshold of zero levels click ok again apply that unsharp mask it should be already available here just under the filter menu and click it and click ok to sharpen things up more now scroll down your layers panel and go all the way to your first backup layer. Hold Ctrl or Command key on the keyboard and click the layer thumbnail to highlight the selected region. Press C on the keyboard to bring up the crop tool. Press return or enter on the keyboard to crop the image to the desired size. So here we have ended up with our first 1024 by 1024 pixel canvas size and this tuning pattern that you can see over here will repeat along the edges. So let's test thing up. You can easily create a pattern out of this shape that we have created right now. Go to edit, define pattern and let's rename it as Turing. Click OK to save the pattern. Now let's test it. Let's create a large canvas. Go to file, new and let's enter a width of 3000 and a height of 3000 pixels. And let's go to the, our adjustment layers, select the pattern and let's select the Turing pattern that we have created just now. And as we zoom in, you can see that the pattern is seamlessly repeating along the edges. Now let's go back to our main document and I'll show you a few more tricks over here. If you want to make the white area transparent or the black area transparent, you can easily do this. Just select your main layer and right click and select blending options to open up the layers style window. In the blend each section, if you drag the white slider, you will see that the white area has become transparent. You can also hold alt or option key on the keyboard and then drag the slider to split it to soften things up. You can also do the same with the black slider to make the black pixels transparent. Also, you can add a color cast to it by adding a simple gradient map. Click here to change the color. Let's change the dark color to something in a shade of dark blue and the lighter color to a shade of yellow. You can change the gradient map color to anything that you like to spice up your color variations. Now I'll show you the step to apply variations to the Turing effect that I was showing at the starting of the video. Select your main layer and experiment with different filters. First let's add a ripple filter. Go to filter, distort, ripple. Set the size to large and the amount to 999% and click OK. You will see that the ripple filter has been stacked at the top of this smart filters. Click the ripple filter and drag it all the way to the bottom and place it below the high pass. Just as you release it, you will see Photoshop is applying all the filters on top of it and you will see a final result that is different from what we have seen earlier. So this is how you can experiment with different filters. Let's hide Ripple for now and experiment with something else. Make sure main layer is selected. Let's go to filter, pixel it and click mosaic. Let's add a cell size of 50 square and click OK. Drag the mosaic all the way to the bottom and once we release it, we'll see a variation of the Turing pattern. Let me show you another variation. For the time being, let's hide mosaic. Let's make sure main is selected. Let's go to filter, blur, motion blur. Let's add an angle of 35 degrees and a distance of 150 pixels and click OK. Just like before, drag motion blur to the bottom of the filter stack and once we release it, we'll see 
and enter new Turing effect created. So this is how you can quickly create Turing effect or reaction diffusion effect in Photoshop. If you like this quick video, please let me know in the comment section and let me know if you want to see more quick tips and tricks like this one. I hope you like this one. I'll see you in the next video and till then stay creative.